I started off just accidentally working with Richard Doll on smoking, and when we studied smoking, the houses were just so enormous. It was quite incredible. You'd look at a few people standing around smoking, you'd think if they keep smoking, then you know, one in four is going to get killed early by it. I mean, every year in the newspapers, there's a hundred new things that might cause cancer or might cause heart disease or might cause stress or depression or, you know, tension in two income families. And the, actually most of them are of little or no relevance. There are a few things that really kill big numbers and most things are of little or no relevance. And overall, you, you look at death rates in Britain, they're going down really steeply. The probability that a man in Britain is gonna die in middle age is only half what it was in 1970. So many, th I mean, the, the big reason for that is smoking, but also other things are going down. We do not live in a world of rapidly increasing death rates. If we live in Western Europe, we're living in a world of rapidly decreasing death rates. And it's odd, people don't see that. They see one scare story after another. And they don't realize there are a few things that matter and most things don't. That really is the message from epidemiology that there are a few big things that really matter and most things don't matter much one way or another. I think what I've done is get people to take the big causes of death seriously. It turns out that when all the things like smoking, blood pressure, blood lipids, when you study them closely, they turn out to be a lot more important than they were thought to be. Smoking just doesn't just kill a quarter of all smokers, it kills half of all smokers if you study it properly. Blood pressure, 20 millimeter difference in blood pressure in middle age means a twofold difference in the likelihood of death from vascular disease in middle age. Differences in blood lipids matter much more than was thought as long as you get the statistics right, do things really carefully. And it, it turns out that we know much more than we thought we did about the avoidability of premature death. In work, you, you want to find things that matter. You do, in some sense, work because it matters. But when you're actually doing a study, then getting it right, getting it absolutely perfect, getting the patterns so that they're clearly seen and understandable, it's beautiful. You can, you, the, the actual studies, the results are beautiful. And when you write them up properly, then you can write stuff which is, which is itself beautiful. And People do try to do that. People really care about how good, how beautifully the results are interpreted, presented and described. And while you're doing that, in a sense, you forget about the larger purposes. You just concentrate on getting right to the thing that you're doing. And then later on, it does fall into place. And when you've got something really right, it's clear. And generally it's simpler. It's when you've got it really right, then the story is often simpler. And you can then bear it in mind and work on other things and fit things together. When we wrote a book on smoking in 1994, I asked Richard Doll to write the foreword to it because he'd done one of the early studies on smoking and I'd worked with him on smoking for about 30 years. And in the foreword, he made it very clear how real these things were and how much they mattered. And what he wrote was, death in old age is inevitable, but death before old age is not. In previous centuries, 70 years used to be regarded as humanity's allotted span of life, and only about one in five lived to such an age. Nowadays, however, for non-smokers in Western countries, the situation is reversed. Only about one in five will die before 70, and the non-smoker death rates are still decreasing, offering the promise, at least in developed countries, of a world where death before 70 is uncommon. But for this promise to be properly realised, ways must be found to limit the vast damage now being done by smoking, and to bring home not only to the many millions of people in developed countries, but also the far larger populations elsewhere, the extent to which those who continue to smoke are shortening their expectation of life by so doing. Richard Dole.